Hi. Hey. I'm Matt. My face is on the poster. Just <laughs> doing my first live comedy special soon. I'm a little nervous. You know what, if I forget something or... They say the camera adds 28 and a half pounds, so that would be bad. <sighs> you waiting here for someone or you couldn't get in or? Oh, why am I so nervous? I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be. I should just, I should be like you, you know, just stoic, you know, just there. <laughs> it's good. It's good, just be me, that's it. That's, the, that's what you're saying here. You're saying just be you. You're saying you know your stuff, just do your stuff. That's what you're saying. Is that what you're saying? That's what you're saying. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt They're calling my name. <laughs> Gotta go. Hope you find what you're looking for. Merci, donkey shame, donkey chins. How are you? How you doing? <laughs> this is exciting. Doing a comedy special. You're all here. We're all together. This is exciting. Look at us all in one room. And we're all so different, right? We all come from different backgrounds, right? Different cultures, different mothers. All of us. Every single one. <laughs> The biggest thing is that we're all from different generations, right? Every single one of us, but we're all here in one room together. All the different generations. I am a millennial. Where are the other millennials at? 15 to 35. Millennials, where you at? Yeah! <laughs> this is my generation. Not a very bright generation. Think about it, we're the generation that didn't play with our toys because we thought Beanie Babies were gonna be worth a fortune one day. <laughs> Don't take the tag off, that's my college fund. <laughs> we're so dumb we didn't even know how we felt half the time, that's why we wore mood rings, remember those? <laughs> oh, it's brown, I guess I'm angry, look at that. Good to know. <laughs> and we got the Gen Xers, Generation X, yeah. 35 to 55. Yeah. <laughs> Very difficult generation to define. For instance, they're on Facebook, they're just not saying anything interesting. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? Like, before you comment on a news story, make 100% sure that it's not fake, okay? Could you do that for me? How could he say that? He didn't say it. <laughs> we'll skip one. Let's go up. The builders. 75 plus. Got any builders here tonight? <laughs> <laughs> they're at home. It's past their bedtime. That's fine. <laughs> Man, they're the best generation, the builders. They built this planet. Yeah. Then we got the baby boomers. Yeah, they ruined the planet. Good for them. <laughs> and hey, uh, these things happen. <laughs> I'm not even mad that you ruined the planet. The worst thing is that you left it to the stupidest generation in the entire world. We don't know what we're doing with heck. We're just going green, whatever that means. The problem is all the baby boomers still own the businesses. So you're figuring out ways how to make money off of our guilt, which is genius, but evil. I'm just saying. <laughs> Certain grocery stores, which shall remain nameless. That's right. They've got no name. <laughs> it's good, you're clever, you're clever. They didn't get that joke in Saskatoon. 
sorry, if you're from Saskatoon, <laughs> it's the worst city ever. Um, it's, Superstore, charging us for our plastic bags. Five cents a bag? Is this really helping the environment? I would have loved to have been at that meeting when that old baby boomer walked up there and pitched that idea. Hmm? Probably with a PowerPoint presentation. One of those collapsible pointers walked up there with all the confidence in the world and said, all right, now, we all know that plastic is only bad for the environment when it's free. If we charge five cents for it, they should magically turn into candy on the side of the road. <laughs> and they pressure you for those bags, too. I walk up, I got my cart full of groceries. She can tell! I don't have any reusable bags in there. Still ask that same condescending question. You gonna need any bags today, sir? I'm always like, bags, no, I'm a Mennonite. I have a pack mule up front, so. <laughs> Bring it around, Jebediah! <laughs> so you're like, yeah, I'm gonna need some bags. And then she's like, how many bags are you gonna need? And now suddenly you're forced into this weird math problem. <laughs> you had no intention of completing this morning, women know right away. They're like, seven, whoa, where'd you come from, right? <laughs> Us guys, we need a bit more time. Back me up if I'm right. Now we're standing there like a bunch of putzes, <laughs> mentally grouping the items on the conveyor belt. <laughs> Takes us 30 minutes. How many bags, you say? Well, that, that's going to be one bag. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I put the toothpaste in that pile, that'll be two. Three for miscellaneous. We'll call the vegetables miscellaneous. And now the milk, that's going to need two. Last time it broke, so that's... <laughs> Seven. <laughs> right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but I mean, who is being this cheap? Really, right? They're five cents. They're five cents. As a Mennonite, I kind of get it, but still, come on, right? Like, who is out there going, I need the exact right amount of bags. I don't want an extra bag. What would I do with an extra bag? You'd put it under the sink with the rest of them, okay? <laughs> That's right. You'd put them in that one cupboard that we all have designated where bags go to die. <laughs> we just shove all our plastic bags in there, never to be seen again until we need to go swimming and we need something to put our bathing suits in. You know I'm right, stop staring at me. bags do you want? I, don't, I always say the same thing. How many bags do you want? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I was just paid, so as many as it takes. <laughs> Let's play this one by ear. Yeah, I'm loaded, lady. Hey, you know what? Bags for everybody! <laughs> you ever feel like doing that? <laughs> do it. Do it. Listen, next time she says, how many bags do you want? You say, all of them. <laughs> it's her job. Like, she has to sell them to you, right? And you're like, no, no, I don't just want yours. I want aisle twos, aisle threes. There's more in the back. Bring the truck around. Let's go. The best part in the end, the prank only comes to like $8, right? Really drive home the point too, pick up all those bags, just walk outside, make an eye contact with her. And just throw them on the ground. That's right. 
Your system is flawed. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm broke. <laughs> I buy a lot of bags. <laughs> broke. Where are broke people at? Where are my broke people at? Broke people. <laughs> really? But you all still came out tonight. Oh, boy. It's decisions like that that are putting you in the black. <laughs> That's right. Someone just yelled, it's only $5. Thank you. That's... That's the hardcore reality I wanted on my comedy special. <laughs> What's that? I can almost hear it. It's the sound of thousands of fans shutting me off right now. $5? Oh, no, thank you. Get out. <laughs> Life is different when you're broke, right? It's different. It's not better or worse. It's just different. I went into Scotiabank, tried to open up an account. Lady looked at me. She goes, you are not richer than you think. <laughs> It got so bad, somebody recently stole my credit card information, and I didn't even care. You ever been there? That's a fun place to be, huh? Lady called me up, four o'clock at night, or afternoon, whatever the kids call it these days. <laughs> she goes, excuse me, sir, are you... <laughs> she had a Bluetooth, but she had her hand to her face. She goes, just comforting, sir. She goes, are you sitting down? I'm like, I am 40 pounds overweight. I am always sitting down. <laughs> she goes, someone has stolen your credit card information. She sounded all worried, but I wasn't. So I had to put on my fake worried voice. I was like, oh no. <laughs> She goes, sir, aren't you concerned? I'm like, you can see my account information, right? She goes, yeah. I'm like, let's play a little game, shall we, Susie? I'm maxed out. What's this guy gonna do? You know as well as I do, the only option he has is to pay my bill. She's like, you want us to go after this guy? I'm like, calm down, Sherlock. He's been through enough. <laughs> I feel bad for the thief. Ghost all this trouble stealing a credit card. Now he's in debt. That's a shame. <laughs> he's gonna have to get a second job just to pay it off. She's like, aren't you worried about identity theft? <laughs> I'm like, identity theft? Listen, lady, uh, this coming up weekend, I'll be performing my first live comedy special in Winnipeg, Manitoba. <laughs> in front of an almost sold out crowd who only showed up because tickets were five dollars. <laughs> this guy can have my identity. <laughs> Hopefully he does a better job with it than I did. Maybe he can make my father proud. I don't know. I'm kidding. He loves me. He does. Oh. Oh. He's so proud. <laughs> we got a quick little money saver technique if you want it. My wife and I, we recently bought a puppy. Yeah, I don't recommend that. <laughs> really, just save yourself 500 bucks, take a dump on your own kitchen floor, okay? <laughs> right? Skip the middleman is all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm a married man. We're the married people here. Married people? Married people? Nice. Nice. Strong, proud clap. Good for you. Your wives are right beside you. <laughs> oh, I love being married. You know why marriage is the best? I've been married. I'm married now. I've been married for six years. It's amazing. I love it. Best choice I ever made. And you know why it's the best? Because you know how deep down inside, we're all terrible people? <laughs> yeah, 
has. And when you're dating, you suppress that. You push that down. And when you're married, it can come out. <laughs> you don't have to pretend anymore. It's different, right? When you're dating and you get into an argument, oh, they're different when you're dating, aren't they? The arguments? Because you're, you're, this is how every argument in a dating world ends. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I'm so sorry. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Why do we ever fight? We should be on the same team. <laughs> I never want to fight. I never want to fight again. But you didn't solve anything. You're still angry, right? Now you got to go home and shoot your cat, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, but she was wrong and she doesn't know it. different, man. Remember in the beginning when you woke up just thrilled to be in the same room? Remember those days? You wake up, you're like, hello. <laughs> hello to you. <laughs> you're beautiful. Don't even start. You're the one who's beautiful. <laughs> now, after six years, my wife and I wake up already mad at each other. <laughs> You ever have that? There's been some fight in the middle of the night you're not aware of? <laughs> Just wake up, right? You kicked me last night! Just trying to get you to stop snoring. What, did a badger crawl up your nose? What happened? <laughs> I remember the first thing my wife said to me the very first morning we woke up beside each other right after our wedding. She looked me straight in the eye. <laughs> the eye, the good one. Uh, <laughs> I was dressed like a pirate. Uh, don't think about that. I didn't mean it. <laughs> it's disturbing for me. Oh. She looked me straight in the eyes. This is what she says. She goes, I can't believe how happy I am. <laughs> Do you know what my wife said to me this morning? Yeah, I made the mistake of sleeping with my arm on her stomach. She woke up, threw me off of her, and said, I have to pee, and then ran. <laughs> I don't know anything about a woman's heart or her mind, but I know everything about the female bladder, okay? It's about the size of a thimble with the structural integrity of a cheap water balloon, okay? <laughs> I've been doing comedy for about a decade now. After every single show, a woman walks up to me and goes, you know, I laugh so hard, I peed a little bit. Aw, <laughs> uh, isn't that nice? <laughs> See, the fact that it happens is one thing, but the fact that you feel the need to share it <laughs> with a total stranger is a whole nother weird thing in and of itself, right? Every married man knows what I'm talking about. You're play fighting with your wife. You're tickling her. She's laughing. <laughs> Whoops, I peed. What? <laughs> How? <laughs> You're an adult. We got rid of the dog for the same reason. <laughs> I don't just want to make fun of them. I got faults of my own. Uh, I have a bit of a food obsession. Uh, I like food um, a little bit too much. I love going to McDonald's. Oh, by myself. <laughs> Because when you go to McDonald's by yourself, it's, it's awesome, right? You pull up, vroom, <laughs> that's my car. Um, pretty accurate impression. And you pull up and right away the speaker goes at McDonald's. They're quick, just <laughs> right? I don't need to know exactly what she's saying. I know it's a question because it goes up at the end, right? 
个好傻大哥，啪！哎、啊、<笑> ，So you just order, you're like McChicken fries Coke, and she's like, 个好大哥，傻大 ，and I drive away. Whatever she's saying doesn't matter anymore. Our part of the conversation is over. <laughs> Get your food. You drive home. It's phenomenal. But if you go to the McDonald's drive-through with other people, heaven forbid, a car full of people, communication shuts down. <laughs> It becomes like Lord of the Flies in there. Everyone's fighting for power. Nobody knows what they want. Right? I don't know if you like me. I always get drive-through anxiety. Right? I pull up. Vroom, speaker goes. <laughs> right? And I'm nice, so I let my friends go first. I'm like, okay, buddy, what do you want? What do you want? Order, 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 order. Come on, order. All right, hurry up. Order. Come on, let's order now. Come on. All right, there's a line forming. <laughs> yeah, there's a, in fact, there's two lines forming. Yeah, there's two. This one's standing still. That one's zipping by. <laughs> okay. See that big M? It's drawing idiots from a 50-mile radius. Hurry up! Come on, would you please? Hmm. We are not singing a song. We are ordering. Why are you humming? Let's go. Come on now. Well, what are you having? What are we married? What do you mean? What am I having? Well, you know, like maybe if I order something and you order something, maybe I can have a little bit of your. No,、nope. no, no, no. Look me in the eye. No. Well, I don't know if I'm like hungry, hungry, or just like snacky hungry. Sorry, was that a question? Do they, do they have any cookies? Yeah, I don't work here. Remember, I'm Matt. We drove in together. Well, could you ask them if they have cookies? You want me to lean over like I'm the idiot? Hi, sorry. Quick question before we order:、uh, Do you guys have any cookies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have cookies. <laughs> well, what kind of cookies do they have? They're never gonna find your body. <laughs> Hi, me again. Sorry, what specific kind of cookies do you have? They got chocolate chip or cauliflower. What do you want? <laughs> There's always some guy in the back. Oh, you know what I want? You know what I really want? You know what I really, 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 really want? Subway. No! <laughs> I like going to IKEA to eat. Yeah, 'cause I'm a Mennonite. I like two things. Meatballs and not paying a lot of money for stuff. <laughs> At IKEA, you can get like 40 meatballs for a dollar or whatever the deal is. I don't know. It's magical. It's like Narnia. Yes. And 'cause it's IKEA, you can actually build a wardrobe and walk through it. <laughs> Just assemble a kick out the back. <laughs> I will take it all. <laughs> A woman ruined it for me, though. She came up to me, and, she, and I, I could tell that she wanted to say something because、uh, she was talking, and she, <laughs> you know, the type. And she, she goes, "Hey, do you know what you're eating there?" And I said, "Yeah, meatballs." And she goes, "Do you know what's in those?" And I was like, "Yeah, balls of meat." And she, <laughs> she goes, "Do you know what kind of meat?" And what I said was, "I don't want to hear it." But I didn't get that far. I got to, "I don't want," and then she went, "Horse." 
I googled it. It's true. <laughs> there was a time when traces of horse meat was found in Ikea meatballs, and that really ticks me off. Why didn't someone tell me sooner? I spent 26 years of my life not knowing that horse is delicious. Oh, my. Mmm. I've offended some of you with that one. <laughs> I don't care. It's good, man. I can't even watch Sea Biscuit without drooling. You're right, you're right. I crossed the line. That was. That... One more. From jockey to jerky, that's all I'm gonna say. That's it. That's, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But don't go to Ikea with your wife, because now you're not eating. No, now what are you doing? Shopping. Who said shopping? No. You don't say shopping. It's not what you tell us. What do you tell us? Just looking. <laughs> That's right. You know. Just looking. I just want to go look. Let's just go looking around. <laughs> You still empty the trunk before you go looking. <laughs> it's shopping. And when a husband or a, a boy beside a girl is in Ikea and they are looking, they have two jobs. Job number one, point out items and have them rejected. <laughs> it's a fun game. My wife and I play it. goes like this. I say, hey, sweetheart, how about this couch? And she goes, really? <laughs> Then she tries to educate me. She goes, what kind of a couch is this? Now you're on a game show, right? <laughs> uh, red. No, no. This is pre-century modern, okay? What is our house? Not paid for. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Our house is post-century pre-modern, okay? With hints of French Renaissance eclectic in the kitchen. Do you think this couch belongs in our house? I'm like, I don't think I belong in our house. I... <laughs> that sounds fancy. <laughs> I feel underdressed in my living room now. The second job is simple. Hold on to her hand, not just to be romantic, which is nice and sweet, but if you let go, she's gone. <laughs> Women wander off at Ikea like old men at picnics. Do you understand? <laughs> I turned around and then I went back. She was gone. She was, and when you're alone in Ikea, it's every man for himself. I had a very simple thought. I said, I know, I'll just exit Ikea. <laughs> you can't exit Ikea! It's like a maze. They design it that way. You're a rat in their sick little game now. No doors, no windows. It's like a casino, except nobody's winning ever. <laughs> well, how do you find your way out? Well, there's weird Swedish hieroglyphics on the ground <laughs> that only women know how to interpret. <laughs> you expect an Ikea elf to pop up and give you a riddle. <laughs> when the blue full moon hits the arrow just right, maybe you can find your way out tonight. <laughs> Where'd he go? Who was that? It's an Ikea elf. I had a pretty ingenious thought. I thought to myself, I know what I'll do. I'll follow the fire escapes. You know what I'm talking about, right? Those little green fires, the guys with the, those guys, right? I was, like, I was like, if there was a fire, what would I do? I would die. Good to know. After 45 minutes, 45 minutes of trying to find the exit, I somehow stumble upon the entrance. There's a greeter there. He's like, welcome to Ikea. Enjoy your shopping. He didn't finish. I punched him in the throat. <laughs> Phase two is me in the parking lot, okay, with the other idiot husbands and fathers. 
And we are now trying to find our cars, and we find them the exact same way, don't we? We don't go into the parking lot to go, look, heaven forbid, then we'd be walking. That'd be terrible. Yes, but what do we do? We take out our car keys, and we just honk the car horn. <laughs> now we're like dolphins using echolocation, just <laughs> beep beep. <laughs> The problem is, all the other guys are doing the same thing. So now it's just a sea of honking horns. One at a time, Glenn! <laughs> Glenn's a jerk. <laughs> and then I heard this sound. It was a beautiful sound. It was my wife, and she was calling to me. She says, Matthew. I turn around, and there she is. She's floating towards me on cloud nine. She's got two industrial size, just looking shopping carts. <laughs> and they're piled 10 feet high with cheap cardboard furniture that I'm gonna have to assemble later that day. <laughs> while she takes a nap because shopping, quote, really takes it out of her. <laughs> All I wanted to do was eat some horse. That's why the best place to still go eat is your parents' house, right? The only problem with eating at your parents' house is that sometimes your parents are there. <laughs> and they ruin everything, because they don't want to eat, they want to talk. You can always tell, too, you should come over for dinner. Well, what time is dinner? 2.30? No. <laughs> Something's up. Run! I love my family, but, uh, you know. <laughs> we play board games a lot. Play Settlers of Catan. <laughs> yeah, because we're Mennonite. <laughs> Gotta play Settlers. <laughs> I'm like, didn't we already do this? <laughs> we settled this land. <laughs> They're like, we played Clue. You ever played Clue? Here's the Clue. Clue, if you've never played it, you're locked in a house, and then someone mysteriously dies. And around hour four of your family gathering, you're thinking, that makes sense to me. <laughs> and <laughs> Here's the thing, the game takes like an hour to play, but that murder would be solved so quickly in real life, right? It's the easiest evidence in the world, right? If a detective walked up to me, and he was like, now, was he killed with a pistol, a knife, or a candlestick? <laughs> right, I'd be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Does he have a gunshot wound? <laughs> a stab wound? <laughs> or a bruise <laughs> that's covered in wax. <laughs> and then they, then they say, yes, but which room was he killed in? Was it the billiards room, the bedroom, or the library? And I'd be like, oh, I don't know. Where was the body found? <laughs> right? It's a two-step process. Step one, locate large pool of blood. Step two, point and say, this room. <laughs> they say, fine, you don't want to play Clue, you want to play Monopoly? I'm like, oh yeah! Financial stress is so much fun in real life. Like to do that in my spare time, too. <laughs> Monopoly is way too close to, be, to reality to be any sort of fun, right? After nine hours of riveting gameplay, you're like, hey, look, I'm bankrupt. Again. <laughs> oh, dad's in prison. Let's call it a night, shall we? <laughs> I was just, uh, 
I was just celebrating uh, my Oma and Opa's 60th wedding anniversary. You believe that? Yeah. <laughs> right? 60 years. And when you're celebrating 60 years, you just, you, you, you understand it. You're like, you look at all these different generations in this one room, and you're like, wow. And you get it then. You're like, this, everyone is so different, right? You change like crazy going from a, a baby to an old baby, right? You do, <laughs> don't you? I think the biggest thing that changes is napping, right? Because when you're a baby, you're supposed to nap. You don't want to nap. When you're my age, I don't know if anyone else is like me. You want to nap, but you don't know how to nap. <laughs> right? Is anyone else like me? I go down for a nap, I wake up feeling way worse than when I went down for the nap. <laughs> right? What is that weird feeling when you wake up from a nap too soon or whatever? You just wait, you're like, what happened? <laughs> Am I dead? I feel dead. Why am I in the bathtub? <laughs> is my liver still here? <laughs> this is how the born identity started. <laughs> my dad though, baby boomer, whoo, he's good at napping. Here's the thing, if you want to get a baby to go to sleep, what do you do? You give him a soothie. You give him the soothie. You put your with your soothie in the you put your put your, put your so the soothie. You want to get a baby boomer to go to sleep? You put him in front of a movie. You put him in front of a movie. Put you in the movie. In the movie. Baby boomers, they fall asleep at every movie before the opening credits are done rolling. They're out. I don't know what it is. I took my dad to D-Box. You ever been to the D-Box? The big chairs that move along with the action of the movie. <laughs> yep. Fell asleep. <laughs> in the D-Box. It's an unbelievable sight to look over at your father and just to see this. Woke him up from the middle of a nap. He goes to bed at 10.30. He was napping before he went to bed. What's the logic there? I'm gonna have a quick lie down, then go to sleep. That's what I'm gonna do. He was pre-gaming bedtime. As good of a napper as my dad is, he pales in comparison to my opa. Woo! Because that's the whole goal of life, to get better at napping, right? And the better we get, the older we get, right? The older we get, the better we get at napping until one day you get so good, you never wake up. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> my opa's a good napper. He's not that good. Almost. Close. Close. He's good, though, man. Woo! He can fall asleep in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> Not just like you're talking and he nods off, that's amateur stuff. My Opa has fallen asleep in the middle of his own sentence. <laughs> that's how you know you're a pro. He's there going, you know, in Paraguay we have huge jaguars and the jaguar come to me and they always attack and I shoot him in the face with a shotgun. And many times we go to and we, you know, Wow. I love it, man. Because what's he thinking? He's going, this millennial doesn't care what I'm talking about. Even I know I've told this story 40 times before. I'm going to have a quick medishlop now. It's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> bored himself to sleep. You might have guessed uh, by the accent, but uh, my family comes from Russia. And, and any other Russians? 
Yeah, right in the front. You can always tell the Russians, right? They're always right there. And they always start in the back, and then they slowly invade other chairs and move to the front. They just... Russia, and then uh, we fled, because that's what my people do. <laughs> we're good at fleeing. We're not good at anything else. Uh, we're not good at sports. Did you watch the Olympics? Russians are always terrible at sports. You'd think we'd be good at, like, downhill skiing, right? Because that's fleeing on ice, really. <laughs> Run! <laughs> no, still bad. We fled to Paraguay, uh, from Russia to Paraguay, to get rid of a dictator. We wanted to get away from a dictator. And then we landed in Paraguay, and there was another dictator there. Uh-oh, right? It's funny now, not funny then, right? <laughs> and the dictator in Paraguay, his name was Alfredo Strausner. Any psychology majors here tonight? You know this guy's going to grow up to be a dictator with a name like Alfredo Strausner. Because you know this kid got picked on in school every single day, right? His friends would walk up to him, Hey, Strausner. <laughs> you want to maybe... <laughs> I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> you want to maybe come over to my house tonight for dinner? We are having... <laughs> Come over for dinner. We are having fettuccine Alfredo! <laughs> Poor Strausner's in the corner. I will kill you all! And he did. Good for him. <laughs> right? Set a goal. That's what I'm saying. So we're in Paraguay, we're rocking it, we're shooting jaguars, we're living life up, right? And then we looked at our watches and we're like, you know, we haven't fled in a while. <laughs> you guys wanna flee? So they fled again, they fled to Canada. And they went from Paraguay and they landed in Manitoba uh, by boat. <laughs> Which I'm still trying to figure out. And they landed like, uh, right before winter hit, and land was like a dollar. And they didn't, they're like, why is the land so cheap? And the salesman's like, no reason. <laughs> and he disappeared like the Ikea elf, right? He just, gone. <laughs> the truth is they landed right at the end of summer, right when it was the hottest, right? So they're probably there going, oh, the bugs just, oh, just sweating. They start praying, they're like, please, Lord, take this heat away. And then winter came, and they're like, what have we done? <laughs> and they all died, except for my parents. They had me, I became a comedian, and here we are. That's my story, what's yours? I would love to hear it. Oh. <laughs> it's crazy, man. The biggest difference with the generations is that, like, my opa didn't have these kind of career options. Right back in the day, you have two career options. You can be a farmer, or you can die. <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be alive. Wonderful. Here's your plow, right? That's it. <laughs> Show business? This was never an option for my opa, right? That's great. I don't think he still gets it. I don't even get it. I was in a sitcom pilot. Don't, don't get excited, it's a Canadian sitcom pilot. <laughs> it won't get picked up. You know how I know? Because it's a Canadian sitcom pilot. I don't get it, man, because I, I was not cast for my skills in this pilot, that is for sure. And I know it because the producer came to me one day, right in the beginning of shooting, he goes, you're gonna be funny, I can tell. I said, oh, you've seen my show? He goes, no. <laughs> I said, well, how do you know I'm gonna be funny? He goes, because you're fat. I said, uh, what, what do you mean? And he said, you know, Chris Farley, John Panette. I'm like, you just said two other fat guys. It's not an explanation. And he goes, fat is funny, 
right? And funny is money. I didn't care, right? I'm in show business. We're doing the gun clicks. Here we go. Right? But let me say this. I do not need people telling me I'm fat. First of all, I am not fat. Yeah. A little defeated that there's only one person who cheered. Okay, I'm also, I'm not skinny. I'm, I'm at that awkward, uncomfortable stage. You know what stage I'm talking about, that stage where I can hold my stomach and pet it like a cat. how to define this. <laughs> like, I don't know what this is, but it doesn't look good in a bathing suit. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> what if this was just the rest of the show, just me doing... <laughs> I look like the world's worst James Bond villain, don't I? <laughs> Imagine this turning around in a swivel chair. We were expecting you, Mr. Bond. <laughs> fat. Just don't invite me to the beach. I don't want to go. <laughs> it's not fun. <sighs> it's terrible. Man, I don't know. I think we're all insecure. I think we all. We have that moment, right? You know that moment I'm talking about? Where you get out of the shower and you're standing there naked <laughs> just looking at yourself in the bathroom mirror going, Right? But then we put clothes on, and it goes away! Yeah! Right? Clothes are amazing! You can make yourself look skinnier with clothes. Women know all about this sorcery, right? You wear black or pleats or no pleats, something with pleats, I can't remember. One time after a show, someone came up to me and goes, Hey, you've lost weight. No! I gained weight! I was wearing a shirt with vertical stripes. Her eyes went up and down. I tricked her. I win! I beat the system. Don't you understand? Another burrito, please. Used to be easy to buy clothes, right? You walk in the store, get the double XL, you walk out. Not anymore, thanks to the Europeans. Now it has to fit them before it fits us. I'm like, why doesn't this shirt fit? She goes, oh, that's our new slim fit collection. I'm like, first of all, a uh, double XL slim fit? <laughs> it's an oxymoron or an oversight. Something is wrong. Get the new double XL slim fit for the obese trim person in your life. <laughs> I said, what is slim fit? She goes, well, it fits our slim customers. I'm like, oh, that's nice, you know, because everything fits your slim customers. It fits because they're slim. Stop rubbing it in. We need fat fit clothes. That's what we need. Yeah, fat fit clothes. Clothes that leave room for your favorite activity, eating pie alone in the dark. <laughs> you listen to me right now. I don't care if you are fat, skinny, short, tall, young or old, you are beautiful, okay? Get over it. Yeah. That's right. Stop looking at yourself in the bathroom mirror trying to find the thing that makes you beautiful because you're not going to find it, okay? <laughs> the thing that makes you beautiful is a lot deeper than that. You were made in the image of God, not your flesh, your spirit. That's what makes you beautiful, okay? That's right. Don't feel bad, though, if you feel insecure. It's not your fault. It's, not, it's the clothes manufacturers. <laughs> Done a bad thing. 
They're putting people in clothes they do not belong in. <laughs> Lulu Lemon. Burn that store to the ground! That's right. Squishing people into yoga pants that have clearly never done yoga a day in their lives. <laughs> You know what we need beside every single Lululemon? We need a sister store. We need a Moo Moo Melon. That's what we need. That's right. Walk in there 24 hours a day. I'll take a Moo Moo Melon and a cake, please. Thank you. I'm sick and tired of people thinking that they can tell you when you're overweight, right? That's ridiculous. Old people do it all the time. That's another big generational difference. Old person will walk up to you at a family gathering. Matthew, what happened? <laughs> I'm sorry? You get so big now. You're so big. You're so big. You're so big, 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 big. Well, I was five last time you saw me. I've grown. No, 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 no. No, you're fat now. <laughs> you big fat boy. You have fat in the stomach, fat in the face. Look, do this. <laughs> Look. It bulge out. It bulge. Look. You know your problem. You eat too much food. That's your problem. You eat too much food. Why do you eat so much food? Why do you like so much food? Why do you like so much food? Why do you like so much food? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Looking forward to the sandwiches at your funeral. <laughs> oh, he can't hear me. That's fine. <laughs> On behalf of all fat people, stop pointing it out. Stop pointing it out politely. Stop pointing it out rudely. We know. Nature tells us. I was in Toronto going from airport to airport on one of those train tram terminal thingies, and it was bouncy. I don't know how to put this delicately, but my breasts were moving independently. I remember the date, January 2nd, because it was on that day that I realized I need a bra. All the guys are staring at me. I'm like, my eyes are up here, buddy! <laughs> That's a tiring joke. Whew. I know I'm out of shape. Look at these. Look at that. That's ridiculous. You see that? Look at that. That's... <laughs> This, this is bad for doing what I'm doing, right? Like, I just, I'm standing. I don't know. I don't even, I don't even think I want to be skinny because uh, athletic people, right? I'm not, if you're naturally skinny, go for it, right? It's just people that are like built and ripped and they just keep going and they keep going. They're like part of some weird cult. They're always trying to recruit you. They're like, Matt, you should come running with us. <laughs> no, no. I don't even like walking, so. <laughs> you should come sitting with me. <laughs> I'm good, I'll show you. They say stupid things. Hey, you can get rid of your excess fat. I'm like, I don't want to get rid of my excess fat. They're like, why not? I'm like, cuz, that's where my memories are stored. <laughs> I like to grab a handle and reminisce. Hey guys, remember that pot roast? That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> that joke took me 26 years to write, technically. <laughs> This is the biggest one they give me. They're all like, come on, Matt, it's an adrenaline rush. 
You're never gonna have an adrenaline rush like that living your sedimentary lifestyle. I'm like, oh yeah? You ever eat 10 German sausages and then your heart stops? Because <laughs> that's a pretty big rush. Your friends and family are all around you. You can still hear them, but now they're in slow motion. They're like, Matt, are you okay? You can see a bright light. You can still taste bratwurst on your lips. That's adrenaline. <laughs> so, so I'm on this sitcom. We're, we're back there. Um, and the producer says to me, for this next scene, you should run in with your shirt off. I said, why? He says, then we see more of your fat. More fat, more funny, more funny, more money. I'm like, candlestick. I said, I'm not taking off my shirt. It won't be funny. He says, yes, it will. I said, no, it won't. He says, yes, it will. I said, no, it won't. He says, yes, it will. I took off my shirt. He said, no, it won't. <laughs> now, here's where it gets weird. It was a Western-themed show. So they said, well, how about you riding on a horse? What I should have said was, I don't know how to ride a horse. Instead, I was like, I'm from Manitoba. I want to represent, right? So I was like, they're like, do you know how to ride? I'm like, yeah, I know how to ride. You B-I-O, let's do this, right? So they bring out this horse, and I get on, and I don't know how to ride a horse. So they say, make the horse go. And I'm like, horse, activate. <laughs> the producer thinks I'm joking, right? He's like, hey, and I'm like, hey. And apparently, that's the sound. <laughs> that you're supposed to make. The horse heard, nah. <laughs> Keep in mind, I don't know how to ride a horse, so I'm doing a lot of this. <laughs> Theme song to the Lone Ranger rushing through my mind. About halfway through the theme song, for a reason I still don't understand, the saddle started to shift to one side. So now, I am hanging off the side of a galloping horse. Looks like I'm doing a move from Cirque du Soleil. People are going, man, those Manitobans really do know how to ride. <laughs> when your brain notices your foot away from the hoof, it kicks into action. It goes, we should do something. I'm like, okay, what should we do, brain? My brain's like, we should bail. <laughs> and I'm like, but then we would get trampled. My brain said, well, maybe just your legs would get trampled. <laughs> I said, you gotta think for the whole body, brain. I had a better plan. I was going to pull myself up using my calf muscles. As it turns out, I do not have calf muscles. I have calves covered in fat. And when you attempt to pull yourself up with your calf fat, you tickle the horse. <laughs> and when a horse is tickled, it does not go, <laughs> whoops, I peed. No. <laughs> when a horse is tickled, it does this with its 500 pound rear end, and you go flying about six and a half feet through midair. You ever watch the Olympics? You wonder how the skiers twist in the air? I know now! I twisted and I landed on my back and my back made this sound. <coughs> my wife ran up to me. She was terrified. She's already afraid of horses. Doesn't trust the way they sleep standing up. Thinks it's creepy. I agree. <laughs> I didn't want to scar her for life. So I was like, I should laugh this off. But when you've been thrown from a horse, the air in your body leaves your body. 
And as we all know, a laugh is about 90% air. <laughs> so now, my laugh didn't sound as reassuring as I wanted it to sound. What I was going for was this. <laughs> it's fine, dear. <laughs> horse me, horse me, bound to happen. <laughs> Don't be afraid. <laughs> Didn't sound like that. Um, I sounded like Gandalf uh, yelling at a hobbit. <laughs> this is what came out. It was like, <laughs> Horse me, horse me, afraid. The whole reason I'm even up here is because I'm a millennial, right? Because when I was young, I was told that I could have any job I wanted when I grew up. And then I did. <laughs> but I still feel like there's this weird gap between me right now and the majority of you. So I would like to impart to you some of that blind millennial Optimism. <laughs> if you are 35 years or older, you listen up to me right now. <laughs> you can have any job you want when you grow up. <laughs> you want to get into show business? Do it. You're only missing one thing. Talent. And... <laughs> That can be taught, right? That can be taught. So tonight, as my final goodbye to you, as my final gift from me to you, I want to teach you, if you want, how to get into show business. It's very simple. If you want to be an actor, the first thing you must learn how to do is accents, right? Once you learn all the accents, that's the base for developing any character, any character you want. Now, every accent is remarkably similar. In fact, once you learn one, you pretty much learned them all. In theory, we should be able to start at one accent, go all the way around the circle, and end exactly where we started. So, as my grand finale, and goodbye to you, I will prove and demonstrate this once and for all. I'm gonna get what? <laughs> You see, the first accent everyone learns how to do is high-class British. You see, it's the easiest of them all to learn, and it's, of course, the most fun, because everything you say in a high-class British accent sounds sophisticated. For instance, porta potty You see what I mean? <laughs> you see, because when Matt Falk says porta potty you're like, oh my, I can smell it from here. But when I say porta potty you go, oh, that sounds delightful, isn't it? <laughs> What kind of a port was that? Did you say, I'll have two glasses of the port au porte, si vous plaît. <laughs> Thank you. Now, from high class British, we can go to low class British. Here's how we do it we start slurring our words together, kind of like a pendulum, right? Now we got on the Beatles sing, right? Peace, love, give hope a chance, right? Look at you, little bird with a knife, put a knife away. Exchange it for a ukulele, sing a folk song. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Right. Now, from low-class British, what we can do is we can go to a very Canadian accent, right? If we want to go from here to Newfie, what we do is we start talking about cod. We say tree instead of three, and we say boy. So we go, one, two, three, bucks of cod, dear boy. Sure, dear boy, sure, dear boy. One, two, three, bucks of cod. Bucks of cod, there. Sure, three, bucks of cod, three, bucks of cod, three. Let's sing a song. Oh, cod, cod, wonderful cod. I love cod, I love cod. Oh, I get in the boat and pray to God. I ask him for a bucket of cod. Deedle it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, oh. Now, which brings me, dear boy, to the next accent. Of course, if you want to go from Newfie to Irish, here's what you do. You pinch your voice, go, oh, tut, tut, look at the Irish. You know, it was Thomas Smythe who once 
said, it is not your blood that makes you Irish, but your willingness to join the Irish nation. I disagree. I think what really makes you Irish is your willingness to hate the Scottish nation. <laughs> Irish and Scottish, very different accents there, I'll show you. Irish is right up here. If you want to do Scottish, you roll your eyes a little bit more and you go bring your voice a little deeper, just like that, right? Sure. And you get really unintelligible, and then you've got the real Scots accent right there. Sure, there, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're a crazy group of people, the Scots, eh? We wear dresses and throw logs for fun. Sure. It's a manly accent. It's the only accent in the world where you can say something like, Angus, bring me the haggis! And you're saying real words. <laughs> no are slighted. Look, we into Russian. Here we are in Russian, yes. Deep, guttural Russian voice, yes, yeah. Big furry hat, big furry hat, big furry hat, big furry hat. Now, from Russian to German, I show you. Ready, watch. The Russian to German. You start in Russian. To go to German, you go a little bit higher, 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 and you have yourself German. <laughs> the German accent, the most efficient accent in the world. Yes, yes. We made the Volkswagen, yes? Yes, you like the car? Of course you do. There we go. Now, we go from here. What we do, we take the V off the W. We start enunciating our words just a little bit more clearly. And look at that. We're back at high-class British where we started. I love you all so much. Good night.